So the Neo Geo AES, one of the holy grails of retro gaming and a system that's been out of my grasp for many years. My first experience with Neo Geo was in the arcade, probably like most of you out there, and I loved it. And I was fully aware there was a home console, but it was just so expensive at the time. The games were expensive and you just didn't see it out and about as often as you did like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis and whatnot. And it was something I always wanted. And eventually in my adult ages, <laughs> I decided to grab one. But the problem with that is the games are expensive as heck. Sure, there's a nice handful that are reasonably priced, but if you're looking for certain games or you're looking to get the whole collection, you gotta be a rich mofo. So that's where flash carts come into play. We've looked at flash carts on many systems in the past on this channel. Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Turbo Graphics, and I do have a few others I want to showcase on the channel and share with you guys. But Neo Geo flash carts are a fairly recent thing within the past few years, and that's what we're taking a look at is this AES multi cart from Darksoft. So Darksoft sent this to me for purpose of review, and today I'm going to share my honest thoughts and opinions on this thing. This cart 560 bucks, very pricey, but if you're into Neo Geo, you kind of know what to expect. I've never dealt with Dark Soft before, never have used any of his products. I've heard good things about his stuff with the CPS, Tato, and whatnot, but this is going to be my first experience with this. So this cart does come in a pretty cool little snap lock box. Uh, does, it is a repro box, but it does have like the SNK logo in there. Uh, the original versions of these boxes, if you find them empty, they're pretty pricey. Sometimes you can find good deals of actual games in these boxes. And I'm always trying to get these boxes because they're very nice. But these repro cases, I've been seeing them popping up lately. And that's what's being used for this cart. The cart in a pretty standard Neo Geo shell. It is a repro cart. They didn't sacrifice any Neo Geo games for their boards here. Compatible with the full library of games plus homebrew. Uh, the only exclusion to that is going to be Neo Geo Dev Games as a request from them since they currently produce titles. So keep that in mind. I know that's going to be disappointing to some, right? Now, referring to my notes here for the rest of the information before we jump into this, it does have three virtual slots uh, and it uses a micro SD card. You can see the micro SD card slot right there. I don't know if it focused. There you go. Uh, has to be FAT32, so keep that in mind. Runs unpatched original ROMs, so that's definitely a good thing. Uh, and according to them, it includes the coolest menu system that they could come up with. I think that's going to be fairly subjective. You may like it, you may dislike it, but as long as it functions, that is really all that matters in my opinion. And with the menu system, it does have a lot of awesome options, music options, different things you can tweak around with the menu, the way that everything boots up, so on and so forth. So really cool. You also have region switching without the use of a Unibios. So if you don't have a Unibios, boom, this gives you those options as far as region goes. Uh, the other thing too that is pretty cool, with this having three virtual slots, so essentially you set it up, you have all your games on here, and you set it up to be three cartridges, but you could swap them around whenever you want and just reflash everything. Uh, but the cool thing with that is that when you're in a game, you can cycle through the slots by holding the start button and hitting left or right. You hold it for like three seconds and it'll swap the game to whatever else you have flashed on there. Uh, and then the other thing, you can go back to the menu by holding up and start. So definitely a cool thing, having those in-game hooks to be able to go to the menu or swap games. Um, the, the cartridge here, the board, it's an eight layer PCB using an Altera Cyclone 4 FPGA using DDR memory, DDR memory and uh, flash memory with an ARM processor. So they're going to continually improve this thing with firmware updates, so on and so forth. Definitely cool. Uh, with the DDR memory, it makes it so flashing and selecting games is pretty quick. And I can attest to that. This thing does load really quick in my opinion. So I was told, and I have experienced, there are a few bugs with this, the, the cartridge at this time. We'll see if I experience any of them when I showcase some footage right now. But from what I understand, if you have an early revision board AES, uh, you may have issues with sound. I don't have an early revision AES, so I haven't had that same issue. But there are a few other bugs that I have experienced playtesting this thing. 
And we'll talk about that once we got it up on the screen. But what I'm being told and everybody else who has acquired these cartridges or has tested them is that these bug fixes, there's like three or, you know, maybe two or three bugs that are people are, you know, they're aware of and that people are experiencing that they're working on fixing and they should have a firmware update within the next week or two for that. So looking forward to that. That is a good thing that they can continually upgrade and update things to fix bugs that people find. But at the same time, with this cartridge being recently released, you got to know what you're getting yourself into because you will most likely until that firmware update comes out, experience some kind of an issue. So far, I haven't experienced a ton of stuff. I have been able to game on this thing and enjoy it, but let's go ahead and jump into it, check it out and see what to do. Let's do it. Okay guys, so here we go. We're booting up and this is how you're typically greeted. Checking games, checking file system takes a few seconds. And then we get into the menu system here. So since I have three games already flashed to the slots, it's gonna give me the option to boot one of them. I could press A, B, or C. Little dude does a little countdown. There's some menu options for that. We'll look at that in a second. We could hit start to go to the menu. So let's go ahead and go to the menu. Now, my first boot up on this, I was using a no-name brand micro SD card. I think maybe I got it from Micro Center. I don't even know for sure. It just had no name on it. And the system would just freeze. Like it would just stay in that checking file system thing for like 20 minutes and do nothing. So now I'm using a SanDisk 16 gigabyte card. And so far, I mean, it, it boots up and everything. So keep that in mind. Don't use a cheap card. So here's our options. We can go into the game list uh, and we'll save that for a second. We're going to check out the configuration. So game configuration is pretty neat. We can go ahead and select a game. Every game is going to be different. You'll have different options here you can mess with. So like Metal Slug's different options that we have. Uh, Garo Mark of the Wolves. Some different options. Boom. We'll go ahead and hit return. So that is pretty cool. System configuration. This is where you can change the mode, MVS or AES, and change the region, Europe, uh, Japan, or USA. So pretty nice. Just like a Unibios, you get that function. And then when you exit this menu, it does take a second to save. So keep that in mind. Menu configuration, that's where a lot of the interesting stuff is. Boot mode, you can go to menu, games, or game list. And then the boot timer, you can go from one to nine or none. And then game list display. The default was thumb, and we'll take a look at that in a second. Game list animations, the little icon for the, the, the game title will kind of flash in and like kind of dissolve in type of thing. I don't really care for it, so I'm going to leave it off for now. But it just animates the logo like a quick little like flash in or whatever. Um, and the thumbnails I don't really care for, but we're going to look at it anyway. I prefer list menu music on or off. Now I turned it off because I noticed I was using menu music for, because I didn't really care for any of the options here, but going through like everything sounds fine from zero, one, two, and then three. And then four, which is the one I've, I've been using, but I turned it off. And then five is like really quiet for some reason. And then six is the same as number five. It's the same song and you can't even hear it. And then seven, every time I've booted this up, seven. What the hell is that? It's all glitched out. Now eight's glitched out. And now, now it's distorted the heck. I, I have to turn it off and it's still playing. Get down. See, there's some kind of, there's a glitch with the, uh, the music. You see, I turned it off. I'm changing it. Nothing is working and it's getting distorted. Very strange. I gotta... Have to reboot. Yeah, so I just leave the music off because I, I... Going through it, sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. 
uh, sometimes like number nine in the music section, it'll be like some people fighting or screaming and it'll be distorted every time I've used it. So I just, I don't even mess with the music. Like I just leave the menu music off. I'm sure that's something that could easily be fixed. I'm not a hundred percent what the issue is, but it's there. So let's go back to the menu configuration. We have the music off. I'm leaving it off. Um, skip intro. You can have that on or off. So yes, skip it. No, leave it. The in-game hotkeys, what I was talking about earlier to go back to the menu or swap your game. And then it does save your settings when you hit A. Diagnostics, I'm not going to go into. It will test your read and write speed on your SD card, and it takes a minute, so I don't want to bother with that. About is going to tell you what build you're on for your menu, the menu date, and whatnot. How many supported games you have installed. So I have 238 out of 239 that are supported by this device. Uh, I am using the uh, Smoke Monster Pack, so let's exit out of that. Then Help will tell you what the uh, in-game hotkeys are for the next game, previous game, and main menu. Those work pretty well so far. And then Exit and Program, that's going to flash the games that you select. And we're not going to do that yet. Let's go to the games list. So here we go. This is thumbnails. I, I mean, it works, and it's typically fine. But for me, I don't really care for this, the way it's displayed. I prefer the list option. And I'm going to show that in a second. I don't know if it's visible on the recording, but I'll get like these little lines or dots that show up. And sometimes you'll get that, like where, as you see the graphic glitches, it doesn't seem to affect anything, but I'm pointing it out because I know if I don't point it out, somebody will be like, well, why didn't you point that out? So I'm pointing it out. Um, it's there. It's kind of annoying, but it doesn't affect anything, it seems. But as you can see, sometimes the logos do glitch where you'll, You'll see like a like A, B, and C up top. I don't know. It's just kind of weird, but it, it does that. So you can scroll through all your games. You see I have multiple of the same thing, it looks like, but they'll be like prototypes or different versions. So this is like pretty much the complete pack of games. So I'm going to go back to the menu because I don't really care for the thumbnail selection. We'll change it to list, which is what I prefer. It just, I think it makes it a little easier to scroll through the games. So there we go, game list, as you see, pretty good. It's still, I still get those little lines or dots that scroll through. Maybe that's something that can be fixed. But like I said, it doesn't really seem to affect anything, but it's there. Um, but there we go. You can hit left and right to page up, you know, to scroll through the pages of letters. So that kind of helps out pretty well. Um, let's go ahead and select some games to put onto the slots not edit anything just try to get it to work um, and see if everything flashes and we could boot up some games so if we hit a it'll show us our slots and what games are currently selected so i'm going to put metal slug 2 onto slot one it hasn't done anything yet it's just assigned it hasn't flashed it yet we still have to flash it so we put metal slug 2 let's find uh what samurai showdown We'll put my my uh my favorite Samurai Showdown four or it's one of my favorites. Put that to slot two, and you could you see you could hit B to remove to remove the game from the slot um, if you want. So let's see. We're gonna put something to slot three that way. Everything reflashes and you could see that live. So we'll put Sengoku three, boom. So now from here. You can filter, if you're searching through your games, the year, different years, first letter, uh, manufacturer. You know, pretty cool that those options are there. But, I mean, if you're just looking for bootlegs or a specific company, comes in handy. But, you know, it's only a couple hundred games. I mean, to me, it's not that big a deal to have to sort through anything. Genre, though, that's that's pretty nice. Beat em ups board games, casino games. If you just want to find, like, your fighting games, which is a a good majority of games are going to be fighting. Hey, you have that option. But since we selected our three slots, we're going to go ahead and go back to the menu and let them flash. So we're going to go to exit and program games, hit A, and just let it go through. So typically, from my experience messing with this, sometimes I get nothing on this screen. And sometimes I get that where it kind of flashes off and on. And it'll take a moment, 
I had one time. See, now it went to three, but it just flashed on. I don't. I think it might be like some kind of sync thing uh, through my OSSC that it's doing that. I'm not sure, but it has happened just being plugged through components straight to the TV. But there we go. I mean, it worked. It flashed them, and it boots up the first one. Pretty good. The Neo Geo sound is playing. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, and it's a glitch that I've heard other people mention. And then sometimes you don't get the intro sound in the beginning of the game. It's kind of like one or the other. It's a glitch that's known and hopefully can be fixed. Now, we'll insert a coin because we are in MVS mode. And then the, the thing is, like, this, some of these games now, that's distorted. Yeah, I had a little distortion in the sound, and it's playing It's playing a Japanese version. I've noticed that with some games, no matter what region you have, it'll play the Japanese version. But I, I am getting a little distortion with the sound. I haven't had that with... Oh, yeah. I haven't had that with every game. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the sounds are most I mean, I'm, I have to present this exactly the way I'm experiencing it and Yeah, these sound distortions are not good Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't but let's we're gonna switch to another game. I'm holding left and start Hopefully that boots up something. Um, yeah, that doesn't that hasn't happened to me every time we don't get the we're not getting the sound here. I don't know if it was supposed to play a sound, but some games it does, some doesn't. Um, where it should. Just I mean, it's weird. You know what I mean? These are things that I think most of them are known and are being worked on. Okay, we're in Sengoku 3. No nothing playing in the beginning here. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people have been pointing that out that like the intros to the games won't play. But then you'll get into the game and typically it'll be fine. But for some reason, like that metal slug, the sound was distorted, but it's almost like I experienced that one other time and then I rebooted the system and it didn't do it. So we'll, we'll try that in a second. But as you see, this game so far... Everything's sounding and looking good. <sighs> okay, we're gonna switch to the next game. So I'm holding left and start, because it should go to the... The, the last one that we haven't tried yet. And there we go, it's playing the Neo Geo sound. Got a little... little distortion. I I'm getting a, I'm getting some sound distortions with this game as well. Let's see how it plays. I haven't really noticed like in games. I've seen a couple people mention that they'd have a they'd have like visual glitches. I haven't really seen that yet. And I've t I've tested quite a few games prior to recording this. Yeah, there's like some popping. Mm. Hmm. See if we get any issues. 
in, in this match. Yeah, I'm getting distortions in my right ear right now. Um, and I have I have the actual cartridge for this game, and I don't get that. I tested that last night. None of my original cartridges. I don't get that. I, I'm not getting those issues. I'm gonna hold starting up. Go back to the menu. There we go. Yeah, I mean, these are things that are hopefully going to be fixed in a firmware update. Um, personally, like, if I'm having sound issues, I can't play these games. It seems a little finicky at times. Like, my cartridge slot's perfectly clean. I'm using a good, um, what you call it, power supply. E everything is fine. So, I mean, there's got to be something. You know, the revisions of the, the, the game boards, the system boards, stuff like that, your power supply, some of that stuff may have a an effect on these issues i don't know but yeah i'm i'm experiencing some stuff and it's 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 a little annoying i mean i don't know what else could have been done i know they went through a lot of testing um for these cartridges let's see if we get the distortions this time yeah this time there's oh almost jumped the gun there the sound is still a little, a little messed up, but yeah, I, I just got to go back to the menu um, to wrap this up. But the the issues with the sounds, I haven't had graphics glitches. I've just had issues with sounds. I have a three uh, a three point six revision AES board. Um, which should be fine from what I understand. There's several revisions. Some people are having issues. Some people are not. Um, when I go to the, the boards on the Arcade Projects website, you know, they do have where you can report issues and whatnot. And the issues I've experienced so far have been reported. So it's been stated that they're being worked on and should be fixed with the uh, the firmware update. But for me, it's it's kind of, you know, at this time, I really want to love this device, and I see it has a lot of potential. You know, I've seen the, the MVS version kind of went through some struggles as well, and they got a lot of that stuff, you know, wrapped up. And I'm, I, I would assume the MVS with so many uh, different revisions of different boards for all the different arcade units, that that had to have been a beast to deal with. So the AES version... I would imagine they should be able to get things kind of tightened up and fixed a lot quicker than the MVS version since there's not as many variables. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, at this time, it's kind of like it's got it's got potential. It's got some hope. Um, I, I dig the way things work, how quick it flashes. But occasionally, you know, getting the, some of those glitches, the sound issues, it, it I'm not really going to play these games at this moment. Hopefully this updated firmware will come out soon. And once it does, I will be retesting and re-reporting, re-recording some gameplay. It'll be a shorter video than this one um, to let you guys know how everything worked out. So there you go. Links in the description if you want to peep this, this uh, cartridge out. Um, there's other options out there I do not have in my possession at this time that's comparable to this unit. Um, I do have the previous version of the Neo SD can't compare that to this um, and that, you know, this is multi-slot where that's one slot. The Neo SD is an excellent device in my opinion, um, but a fair comparison would be this versus the Pro. And I don't have the Pro, so I can't compare it at this time. Maybe that'll change in the future. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but there you go. My honest take, honest opinion on this. Seems like it's still in beta that people are testing this to find issues for them to be fixed. Kind of the struggles of a project like this. Um, definitely an awesome device that has potential to be completely solid. Can't wait for the firmware update. I'll keep you guys informed. Really do appreciate it. I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye-byes, and boom. Bye.